every year he would replace that C-Class. Hello, welcome back to episode two of Life With My Classic, where we bring you owners of classic Mercedes-Benz models who don't keep them in garages, they daily drive them just the way they should be. Today, you join me somewhere in Northwest London, where we're gonna be meeting this week's owner, Raz Rehan. But before we do that, make sure you check out episode one if you've missed it. Right. Raz's house is there. Let's go say hello. Mr. AMG Raz. Alex, good to meet you, man. Absolute pleasure. Thank Finally you very meet much. in person. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to your house. This Welcome feels a bit to like... my humble but snowed over and frozen abode. It does feel a little bit like MTV Cribs, doesn't it? But we're not here to talk about No, we're not. we're not. We're, we're here not. to talk about your love and passion for not only cars, but especially Mercedes-Benz models. That's kind of where it all started, actually, for me. So, so yeah, talk to me about the history of like, why are you a petrol head? Why Mercedes as well? Because I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of Merc stuff. There's, you will see a lot of Mercedes in my house, be it cars, uh, merchandise, car models, caps. Like I'm a bit of an addict. I'm the guy who walks in a Mercedes store and by the time he finishes the bank balance is half empty. <laughs> um, but that's where it all started for me. So some of you might know that I have a YouTube channel called Remove Before Race. It didn't actually start there. It didn't start with me reviewing cars. It was just me cataloging my love of Mercedes on Instagram, which is where this unofficial title of Mr. AMG, as you kindly said, came from. So all I was doing was showing myself cleaning cars, you know, changing wheels, um, doing little upgrades like, you know, badges here and there. Very nice. And that kind of blew up because people kind of resonated with how much passion I have for these particular brands. And it was just meeting that community and getting this whole kind of family together of Mercedes people from all over the world. And that's what kind of got me to thinking, well, you know what, I love doing this and I'd love to make it a job. And that is where then Remove Before Race came from. And then all the VFX reviews and the car reviews and then the collection of cars just kind of, it went a bit, a little bit crazy after yeah, that. Which let's, we will let's get put it that way. Which we'll, we'll, we'll get, get to onto, that. Uh, we'll very get to very shortly. But you mentioned that you are a YouTuber yes. and Instagram. What kind of stuff do you do on YouTube? Absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. I mean, it, the main focus is performance luxury cars, much like the ones that we see here, uh, of all brands. Um, and my little niche is that I, I love comics and superheroes and TV and film. So I've thrown in a lot of VFX, so like showing the inside of an engine. Sometimes I'm flying around or teleporting, which is my own personality brought into, you know, my, my videos. But I think people resonate with that and they do enjoy it. But yeah, we review pretty much everything. My biggest viewership is undoubtedly probably Mercedes and AMG. Yeah. Uh, not by design, but because, you know, they can tell when my bias lies a little <laughs> bit, which is fine. But uh, yeah, I love the job and I love, I love the cars. And there is a deeper reason to why I love Mercedes so much, which is actually linked to the car that we're going to talk about today. But I'll fill you in as we, yeah, we, as we drive around. Uh, you were mentioning VFX. Um, can you make me taller? Listen, mate, if, if I can make anyone taller, I'd start with myself. Yeah, OK, yeah, we both do that, we both do that. <laughs> but um, obviously, you mentioned you've got a nice collection of cars, Mercedes-Benz models, yes. new and old. We'll and old. in a minute. That's uh, right. So talk to me about the new stuff first, because we've stuff. got, we have got the beast here, don't we? Well, this is, as Mercedes likes to say, stronger than time. And I love the G-Wagon. I think I will always own one, be it in combustion form or recently had the opportunity to see the electric one that they're planning as well, which was amazing. And I just think it's a design icon and this type of weather that we're in today. I mean, what else are you gonna pick in the driveway? Indeed, and this has been quite useful, has it not? Because were it not for this car, your classic yep. wouldn't actually be here. You wouldn't be here as well either. <laughs> Insert clip. Slowly, slowly forward, slow, that's it, that's it, stop, keep going. That's it, come on, straighten it up, straighten it, come on. Straighten it. So this actually managed to pull out your w Exactly, so we had trucks come who were refusing to come down the road because it was so snowy. We had all types of solutions that we were trying to work and we could not get the car out. It was mud and snow and it was stuck and that was it. I just happened to be there with the G-Wagon overseeing things and they said, look, why don't you just try it? So I chucked it into low range mode and that was it. I never even touched the accelerator. It oh. just literally just pulled it out. That is very exciting. So is this the car that you use most? 
Um, yes, yes. Um, and I think that's only going to increase when I get an electric one, so... Uh... That is very, very exciting. So we've talked about the G-Wagon. Yes. What else have we got in your new stable? Yes. We have a garage there. Are we going to get onto that later? Uh, let me show you this one first. Okay. So this is the latest addition to the, to the fleet. And it might, might be my favourite, other than the classic. Oh. So it's the C63S final edition. Last V8 um, holds a special place in all AMG. Uh, fans hearts so that is very special and I love it and it's got a little bit of customization I have popped the beautiful of Altabuck logo on the bonnet which I think is perfect but you mentioned the garage yeah I need to show you what's all right let's do you, you're gonna like that you're gonna like that a lot all right you ready for this what do we have in here it's my favorite part of every morning it's nothing too special oh Oh, it's a little bit special. Wow. <laughs> and look at your number plate as well. Yeah. That is very cool. So the um, 67 was the year that AMG was founded. So that was that. But it also kind of looks like GT. Yeah. So I've had a fair few AMG GTs and this is obviously the cream of the crop, being the GT Black Series, king of the Nürburgring production form. Um, I just call it the Batmobile because Massive comic nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very, very cool. It. How often do you drive that? Very often, actually. Do you actually? Very often. But not oh, today. But not today. It's a little bit snowy. It's a li you a say that, snowy. but I'm prepared because I've got mud and snow tyres for this car sitting in the back. So it's not a garage creep. Okay, well then why don't we put mud and snow tyres on and take it out? Yeah, why not? We don't have time. No, we haven't. We don't have time for that. We have got time for one other thing, if you want it though. Yeah. Would you like to hear a cold start of this? What do you reckon? Should we hear a cold start of this? Everyone's screaming, of yes. Of course. Everyone is screaming. Oh. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. That is naughty. Very naughty. I love it. Yeah. I won't rev it because it's cold, but that works. I like that. She's my baby. Yeah. Has she got a name? She hasn't actually, oh. despite being a very vivid colour, but is, I think... Is her name not Ken? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but C63 Black Series is a good enough name. Yeah, me, yeah right, absolutely. So, very, yeah. very cool two-car garage. Now, as nice as these are, and I love my modern, you see a kind of a theme here that I have cars that I think are timeless, but the most timeless one I have is the one that we're going to speak about. And it's a very special one, isn't it's it? It's very special for a lot of reasons. And uh, we, we should delve into that. Let's go check it out. Yeah? Let's go. There she is. Here she is indeed. And she has a name and she is a she. Yeah. Um, we call her Ruby. For obvious reasons? For obvious reasons. Um, a beautiful W124 300D. Um, there's a there's a, a lot of value uh, for me personally for this car. Um, it's my late father's car, who was the person who really instilled my love of uh, all things Mercedes, um, and it was it was his pride and joy. And because of that, it's my pride and joy, and I I adore this car uh, in every way, despite having all these other cars with their amazing you know modern uh, technology and great engines and everything. Driving this just brings back the reasons why we love cars um, for me. And I bet, Raz, that you have all of these really, really nice new, yep. very fast, very powerful Mercedes. Correct. But if there was one car that you had to keep, I'm guessing it's going to be this it, one. It would be this one. It for would sentimental one. values and for the fact that you'll never sell it, will you? It's, it's the one car that, regardless of where I take it, I always get approached and say, would you sell this? everywhere yeah. petrol stations car park wherever this car goes someone wants to buy it uh, so it's not just me who feels that way it's clearly you know the public as well um, and you can't argue with it i mean it's, it's an absolute beauty it's timeless it is a timeless time to be absolutely should we have a quick walk around because yes please i please. really 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 like these the condition of it looks pretty impeccable what's the service like how long did your dad own it so dad had it for about five or so years. Uh, it came up in a dealership um, up in Milton Keynes and the paperwork was immaculate. The state of the car was immaculate. And it was just that 
you think of it as that one opportunity. Because he, he was an S-Class man, right? He loved S-Classes. And he had every single generation up to this uh, 223 now. Uh, but he always wanted a car that, that reminded him of why he fell in love with the S-Class. He wanted a car for the weekend that he would wax up and polish, which he did with this car every weekend, and really give it love and attention. And when this came up, he just couldn't say no. So we went and picked it up. I bought it for him. Um, just a couple of private family photos taken. Not, not really sing, song and dance about it, but he absolutely adored it um, and took care of it. And we used it on every special occasion since then. Amazing. So essentially for us, I mean, this car is basically part of the family now, so it's not going anywhere. Amazing. Well, Ruby certainly looks amazing. Uh, we're going to go out for a drive in a little while, but yeah. before that, Tell me, what is it like driving a car like this? It is, it, like I said, it reminds you of why you fall in love with cars in the first place. Despite how advanced our cars are today, the suspension, the steering, once the car warms up, the engine response, everything is just flawless. And it feels, regardless of like the weather we have today, some of these cars might struggle. Um, the 124 just doesn't. We mentioned the condition. Uh, one thing that we have decided as a family, you will see a few scuffs and a few bits and pieces here and there, but this is all part of the car's history. So it's not a garage queen. I was moving house, I used it for that. Um, my dad used it for his work. And every scuff, every little thing on there will stay on here forever. We're not gonna repair it. Because they all have a story, right? They all have a story. And these little things about the car is what makes them unique to us. And what It's like having a scar that you've healed from yourself as a human. Because this is part of the family, it's gonna stay the way it is. So. Yeah, that's how it should be, I think. So it's very, very clear that this car, Ruby, means so much to you. Ruby is part of the family, never gonna be sold, always cherished. I'm sure that all of us have got that one car that we'll never sell either. Uh, now, Raz, you obviously mentioned this is the W124, which Correct. is the precursor to the E-Class. Yes. We also have a C-Class next to us, and just look at the size difference. Similar kind of size. Indeed. Now. Indeed, yeah. yeah. So, so back uh, in the day, this was actually quite a big, kind of middle of the road Correct. luxury car. You can see our cars have grown over time now. So they that being C-Class, this being precursor to E-Class, you know, that's the way the world's going, but perfect size, I think. Indeed, slim, yeah. Right? And one of my favorite features and, and something that you said off camera as well. Yeah. Single wiper. Single wiper. Bring back the Smooth. single wiper. Perfect, semi-circle, there's nothing like it. Happy days, happy days. <laughs> uh, speaking of perfect things, I think the interior is also gonna be pretty oh, perfect. I love it. So can we check that out? Please. Let's go. Oh yeah, this already feels good, doesn't it? Special. So this is very nice. And the first kind of Mercedes hallmark that I've noticed is the wood. The wood is so important. It's so classic Mercedes interior. You cannot buy, you know, a, a young timer, or old timer without having, in my opinion, that lovely wood trim. Um, and then you look at the, the color uh, of the interior, that beige, you know, it's so synonymous to me with the Mercedes saloons of this era uh, that it, it was just the perfect specification. I, I love it. It's meant to be like that that luxurious lounge that you come and sit in someone's house, you know, and that's exactly what it invokes. It's a lovely place to sit in. And uh, talking about specification, it's fair to say that this is quite a standard spec, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's quite a basic 124, but even in basic trim, um, it's so well appointed. Look, look at the fabric, the fabric seats, you know, lovely pattern. They're, they're uh, warm in the winter. They're not too hot in the summer. Uh, we've got things like sunroof, which is nice, but nothing too much to like distract you from, from the important stuff, which is the connection to the car. I couldn't have said it better myself. And another thing I've noticed as well, we've got the old Nokia phone cradle back from a time when you were actually allowed to be on the phone while, while driving. You're driving. That's right. And again, it was an official accessory, you know, but it's so reminiscent of the 90s that dad didn't want to remove it because it just made so much sense that when would you see that in a modern car? You just, it just, it doesn't happen. You know, it doesn't happen. So that's a blast from the past. But I mean, speaking of blast from the past, most people aren't gonna know what that is. I'm, I'm too young to know what that is. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. How old are you? Um, he told me he's 36, I'm 37. We grew, we grew up with these, Raz. We, we know what these are. If yeah. you don't know what this is, children, this is called a tape. If you don't know what a tape is, then it's like a fat CD. If you don't know what a CD is, then you're in the wrong place, <laughs> right? You were going to go on to MP3. MP3 players, that's yeah. right. Yeah, let's you not go down mind. that rabbit hole. Listen, let's not uh, but we've got other little trinkets here, don't we? There's a there's an official uh, Mercedes <laughs> OEM. Um, You've uh, pointed to the holder. best thing. This is my favourite <laughs> thing in the car. 
So what dad did was he got one of his typical <laughs> cup takeaway boxes. But the cool thing about it is it fits absolutely perfectly. That is perfect. In the center. That is practically OEM. So we decided that we're going to keep it there and until it disintegrates, we will have it there. And then I'll try to find an exact replica of it. Then we've got like a tissue box holder in the back as well. Very nice. Um, but yeah, you know, this is kind of as, um, as many mods as this car is going to get. That's it. Nothing else. Everything else is original. I love it. And you're, uh, you're actually holding something in your hand that many people also won't recognize. I have absolutely as, no what idea. What is this? This is a key. A key and for a car. You have to plug it in to the ignition and then twist it. That is very nice. So yeah, it's, it's a comfortable car. Speaking of using it, um, I think it's about time that we, uh, we actually took this car out on the road for a, for a little test drive, don't you? That'd be a great idea. But before we do that, I think it's fair to say that we need to defrost. Defrost, yes. So let's, let's do that. Jump out and then go for a drive. <laughs> Now, Raz, we've only done like 50 meters or so, but I can already tell how comfortable it is in here. It is, isn't it? And where's the road noise? And it's how comfortable beautiful. is the suspension? It is so good. It's brilliant. And when I say it's a tank, that's what I mean. It's not just, you know, the, the way it's built. It's the way it makes you feel inside. You're yeah. You're in like a bunker. But I like the fact that we've got really thick tires as well that just Correct. soaks up any bumps. Correct. The NVH levels in this car are incredible because like you said, I can barely hear the engine. And it is a big, you know, three litre diesel. It's diesel from the past as well. So it's not like our modern diesel, which are, you know, almost, uh, you can't tell the difference to our petrol engines. Yeah. Back then they were quite, you know, noisy. Yeah, yeah. And the thing I really like as well is that there are no rattles, no squeaks, it is solid, like you said, like a tank. Correct, and 85,500 miles later. That's, a, that's, a, that's really low mileage, isn't it, for it one is. of these? It is, but then in terms of like a car's history generally, it's a lot of miles to go through and still be, you know, absolutely solid. Completely tight, yeah. So uh, what does driving your your dad's car feel like to you? Um, for me, it's, it's a great connection to him, uh, for me, because the reason I even like Mercedes to begin with it kind of stemmed back to my grandfather, who um, he, was, he was never rich enough to have a Mercedes. He was a working man, just working factories. He actually worked in factory under Alan Sugar once as well. Oh, wow. We called the governor. <laughs> um, but he, he was the first person to come to this country and brought the whole family along. But he loved cars. So I remember he, my dad told me he, he ordered an Opel Ascona from factory, uh, custom built, you know, made to order, and went to collect it. With, with my dad and, and his elder brother. Very cool. And he loved it, but he wanted a Mercedes. He always wanted a Mercedes. So when my dad started, started earning, um, instead of getting himself a car, the first car he bought was a C-Class for my grandfather. Oh, wicked. And every year he would replace that C-Class. Um, in fact, he might have even started, tell a lie, with a 124. Oh. Um, and he loved that car. And I, as a kid, I would see him polishing it with, uh, he was famous for, using one cloth to clean the whole car, <laughs> but meticulously. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that kind of ingrained in me. Then my dad was the same. Like I said, he was an S-Class man. He yeah. loved his Mercs, had a few SLs in it. You know, a few cool cars over the years. And that just, you know, straight away I was onto it. It's a different type of mode you have to get into. It's our cars today, very direct, you know. Yeah. But with this, you kind of, you glide it into place which is fun in itself, actually. Exactly, and that's what I love about um, old classics and you know modern classics like this one. You get in and then it inspires you to drive it sedately, to take your time, don't rush. You know, it is just you and the car on the road ahead. There are no distractions. And you can just stop and think. That's right, that's right. I, I think you actually pay attention more to the, 100%. the art of driving, right? Yeah, even for me, sitting in the passenger seat, it feels special and I've just been smiling the whole time because you know it's been a long time since I've actually just sat and just enjoyed an interior and just enjoyed driving slowly is it, it feels special it is so comfortable it is it? there is no noise the and seats like you were doing with the headrest yeah, earlier it is really really yeah. nice it is really nice Mercedes definitely know how to screw an interior together absolutely, don't they absolutely 
So Raz, you've obviously done quite a few miles in this car. Talk to me about um, reliability, also what it's like as a daily driver. Is it any good? Well, we've had to do nothing on it reliability-wise. The only thing I do is top off the battery sometimes. Apart from that, seriously not a single thing. Um, if I needed anything, I could just go to the Mercedes-Benz Classic Center and stuff got. You actually get, I'm amazed that they keep such a vast catalog of old parts. Um, which are old parts but brand new yeah, for yeah. your cars. Um, but I've never needed it. It's been great. And as a daily driver, um, it's you can see what it's like. We're just doing a short trip now, but this car on a longer run is where it really comes into its own as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you can use it for anything. And obviously you love driving this car, but there was another very special car that you drive. What was that? So I got to drive the car that's known as the AMG Hammer and it was at a very special event, actually done by Mercedes-Benz Classic Centre again, um, in Immendingen in their testing facility. So I had this classic 124 AMG Hammer, looks like this, but the way it drove was incredible. It was like a modern car, the response to the engine, how it sounded. It's the car that really started, you know, that people lusting after AMG. Yeah, yeah. And that's like on my radar now, like if I could ever find one, I'd sell everything and just buy that. But not this. But not this. No. Apart from this, we'd keep this we'd, and we'd have the hammer Yeah. And sell all the rest. <laughs> so if anyone watching this has got an AMG hammer and wants to sell it to Raz, then uh, then Message just me. hit him up. Hit him DM up on, on YouTube, on Instagram, wherever. Final question, what would you say to anyone watching this who's thinking about pulling the trigger and buying a classic or a modern classic Mercedes? I, I would warn you because if you do pull the trigger, you will end up selling things you shouldn't in order to keep that car because <laughs> it will keep you so happy and you'll be just unimpressed with everything else that you ever drive. So absolutely go pull the trigger, get one of these amazing young timers, old timers. You'll never look back. There you go. Go ham, buy classics. <laughs> happy days, well said. All right then, Raz, thank you very much Good for uh, showing me around not only your collection, but your amazing sentimentally very valuable w124 has been an absolute pleasure what it is the pride and joy the pride, the pride, and, pride and joy pride. ruby the car that you'll never get rid of Damn right. uh, so all i have to say now is thank you very much for watching episode two of life with my classic if you want to watch more episodes then make sure you subscribe to the mercedes benz channel uh, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time right should we warm up yes please let's go do that <laughs>